Hello, everyone, and welcome back to English is Easy. I'm your host, Connor. If you want to improve your English listening skills, you are in the right place. That's because I use slow, clear English to tell stories and give engaging lessons. Today, I'm going to be telling you a story from ancient China in very clear, very easy to understand English. We will first listen to the story, then we'll learn some new words that we saw in the story, and finally, we will think more deeply about what the story means and practice some of what we've learned. But before we start, before we begin, did you know that 90% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel? That's crazy, right? If you like my videos, if you want to support me, please remember to click like, click subscribe, and maybe even leave me a comment. You can tell me what you thought was helpful, or maybe you can share with me why you are learning English in the first place. As a new channel, this helps me a lot, and it allows me to keep making free, high-quality videos for you all. One more thing. If you would like to read as you listen today, be sure to click the closed captions button. This will make the words I'm saying appear on the screen. All right, if you are ready to get started, let's begin. Today, I'm going to tell you in very simple English the story from ancient China called Sai Wang Shi Ma. Translated, that means a man named Sai Wang who lost his horse. In a small village near the border of China, there lived an old man named Sai Wang. This man had a very simple life, but he was content with what he had. That means he did not always go around hoping to get more, wanting and wishing for more. No, he was okay with his simple life. Well, one day, his prized horse, his beloved horse, which he relied on to make money for his livelihood, escaped from its stable, and it disappeared into the mountains. Now the villagers, or other people who lived in this village, they came to console Sai Wang, or make him feel better. They were lamenting, lamenting the loss of his valuable horse. But Sai Wang surprised them with his response. He said, Who knows if this is a blessing or a curse? In other words, who can really say for certain if this is a good thing or a bad thing? Sure enough, several days passed. Several days went by. And to everyone's amazement, the lost horse returned. It came back. But guess what? The horse wasn't alone. It had brought back a magnificent wild horse with it. The villagers marveled at Sai Wang's good fortune. In other words, they were pleasantly surprised at his good luck. They congratulated him on his new wealth. However, Sai Wang surprised them once again with his response. He remained calm, 
And he said once again, you know what? Who knows if this is a blessing or a curse? Well, Sai Wung had a son who was thrilled about the arrival of this new horse, and his son started riding it every day. The boy enjoyed the freedom and speed that this horse offered him. However, one day, while he was galloping through the fields, this new wild horse, it suddenly bucked or jumped, and it threw Sai Wung's son off of its back. The boy landed hard, and he broke his leg. The villagers rushed to Sai Wung's house once again to offer their sympathies, but once more, Sai Wung remained composed. Composed. That means he did not have a big reaction. He was very calm, and he said, Who knows if this is a blessing or a curse? Who knows if this is a good thing or a bad thing? Sure enough, soon after his son's injury, news arrived that a neighboring kingdom, a nearby kingdom, had declared war. They had announced war on their land. The emperor's army began conscripting all able-bodied young men from the village to join this fight. However, because Sai Wung's son had a broken leg, the boy was deemed unfit, or it was decided that he was not usable for military service, and the boy was spared from being drafted from being drafted. As the war raged on, or continued in a violent way, many young men from this village, they were sent to the battlefield, and unfortunately not all of them returned. Sai Wung's son, safe at home with his broken leg, he was spared from the horrors or the frights of war, and he remained by his father's side, helping him tend to their farm or take care of their farm. In the end, the villagers had a realization that Sai Wung was a wise man. What seemed like misfortune at first, like the loss of his prized horse and his son's injury, turned out to be blessings in disguise, or things that seemed bad, but they were actually good. Sai Wung's calm demeanor, or way of acting and being, his philosophical outlook on life, had taught them all a very valuable lesson. The lesson was that fate is unpredictable, and Sometimes things that appear to be bad can really be good, whereas at the same time, sometimes things you might think are good are actually bad. And so the story of Sai Wung and his lost horse became a timeless lesson in resilience, patience, and the ever-changing nature of fortune. All right, guys, that's the end of the story. What I'd like to do now is just revisit several rather difficult vocabulary words that we encountered or came across in this story and talk about them in a little bit more depth or detail. One word is conscript. What that means is to enroll someone into military service in a compulsory way or against their <laughs> ability to say no. In other words, they cannot say no 
and you're going to send them to war. Here's an example. During times of war, governments often conscript young men into the military to bolster their forces or improve their forces, make their forces stronger. Another word we saw in the story was lamenting. Lamenting. If you lament something, you express sorrow or sadness or regret. For example, the villagers were lamenting the loss of their crops due to the drought that ravaged the countryside. In other words, they were expressing how sorry they were that they did not have a bountiful harvest, right? A big harvest. Another word we saw was marveled. If you marvel at something, then you are filled with wonder or astonishment at the sight of it. An example might be that children sometimes marvel at magicians and their tricks. Children cannot understand how magicians seemingly magically make objects disappear and then reappear. They marvel at magicians and their tricks. One last difficult vocab word we can talk about is resilience. Resilience. That means the ability to recover quickly from a difficulty or a setback. Here's an example. Despite facing numerous challenges or many challenges, the community showed remarkable resilience in rebuilding their homes after the devastating earthquake. So there was an earthquake, it was a big challenge for the community, but they did not give up. They kept going, and this is the quality or the trait of resilience. Before I end today's episode, I would like to invite you all to use your English and think more deeply about the story of Sai Wang Sherma. In the comments section of this video, can you tell me about a time in your life when something that seemed good turned out to actually be bad, or vice versa, or the opposite? Can you tell me about a time when something bad or something that seemed bad turned out to actually be good? That's all of our time for today. I want to thank you guys one more time for supporting me, supporting this channel, and supporting the work that I do. I hope you found it useful, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.